Tell me about your first employee. When did you know it was time? Like if you're set on doing a million your first year, which most guys should be, you should hire that office girl whenever the bank account says it, it's a, it allots for it. Pull yourself out of the field now and put yourself into the driver's seat of your business. In our industry, too many guys are hiring before they have a process in place and they're burning up good sales reps. Because if you don't have a true sales process, okay. you're not providing them any value. Hey, how's it going? It's Tim Brown. This is the Hook Better Leads Podcast. And today I have a special guest with me. Junie. No, just kidding. It's Dylan Mullins. How you doing, Dylan? I'm good, brother. How about you? I'm doing very good. We're talking about when to hire your first employee. We're going to talk about a lot of things, especially the dynamic between employees and business owners and that back and forth. So, Dylan, uh, can you give a brief history of your story as a roofing company? How did you come up? When did you hire your first employee? Where, where are you at now with employees? Yeah, man. So my story in the game, um, I, I grew up in the trades. I had a business failed. Like, I think that story is pretty common at this point. Um, but it's probably crazy for guys who who uh, see me around to know a couple things. One, I do not work for Hunter Ballou. <laughs> you know, that's a common misconception. Everybody thinks I'm a member of the revolt team ah. or something like that. Um, I'm just in every revolt. Yeah. Actually, uh, J.P. Wilson, he his wife made a comment that um, – that I wasn't in a revolt video. I wasn't, I wasn't in the Brookins brothers, uh, testimonial video. And that was crazy to her. Um, so anyways, uh, a little tangent <laughs> there, but, uh, my story in the game with this business, um, started in 2018, really bootstrapped this, this thing for a while and, uh, <clears throat> you know, grew it from the ground up truly, um, didn't actually hire our first employee, um, that wasn't family. So it was me, my dad, and my brother to begin with. And it was that way for a while. We didn't hire anybody until uh, July of 2021. Um, I believe it was almost 18 months ago and or a little over 18 months ago, 19 months ago, something like that. I just keep saying 18 cause it's comfy, you know? And, um, so you want to talk about yeah. when I hired my first employee, man, I, we went from one 18 months ago to now almost 20, just hired an office, another office girl this weekend. I wow. 17. Um, the goal is crazy to be the 30 yeah. at this time last, next year. So that is absolutely wild. That is quick. Um, are you scared? Every day, brother. I'll wake up scared. Um, <laughs> Good. Okay, just making sure. <laughs> well, and you know, Tim, you know, the first one was the hardest one. The first one was the scariest one by far. Oh, yeah. You know, and then everyone after that. Just oh, gets can I tell my first employee story real quick? For sure, brother. My I first hear employee, I trained him day in and day out for a year, like poured my heart and soul into him. And he left before he left at one year be wow. before we could train anyone else. It was like, I, it was just a, it was a soul sucking moment to be honest with you. Cause I literally <laughs> spent a year trying to get him up and I, I put so much into him, you know, anyways, from that moment on, I resolved to kind of go a little faster because I couldn't, I couldn't have like uh 33% of the business leave or whatever, a quarter of the business leave at one time. I just wanted to go faster so that if somebody left, it wasn't like the end of the world. Cause technically it should be fine. If you leave a company, that's fine. Like you shouldn't be required to stay for that business owner's mental health or whatever, but it's, it was very tough at the beginning. So those first couple employees can be very tough for a lot of reasons. 100%, man. And I, I think you got a really good point there. And that's probably why I had the drive to grow so fast. You know, now, and I love every one of my guys, but I also tell them I existed before you. I'll exist while you're here and I'll exist long after you're gone. We're good. We'll love on you while you're here. Um, but you're right, man. Like if that one guy leaves and you have put so much on their plate, it, it just – puts even at, at 20 if somebody leaves today man and, and you guys are very similar at hook right you guys are about that 20 range give or take um it throws a little chink yep, in we it just hit 25 nice brother so i see i'm ch i'm chasing tim now i'm gonna put that on my on my dream board at home yeah yeah yeah. let's go holy it sounds like at this pace we're gonna pass me pretty quick <laughs> no we'll, we'll uh we'll be celebrating together brother but it, it's easier right because there's less there's more spokes on the wheel you know we got more legs on the table but uh we still got to pick up some mm -hmm. of the slack for sure man so so it, tell me about your first employee when did you know it was time when did you kind of make that decision and what what 
kind of benchmarks would you say somebody should be looking at to identify? Is it a million plus when it's time or is it, is there anything that somebody can look at as a indicator that they should get their first employee? You know, for us, I guess it's probably important to say who that was. Um, Cause like I was just saying, I, I think Dimitri gives great advice when he says your first one should be an office person. And we kind of put that on the back burner for a while. Dylan was answering the phones and actually our negative Google reviews were based on Dylan answering the phones poorly. Cause he's a great communicator. Oh my God. Person, but I'm just not a great follow-up guy, man. I'm a visionary, not an integrator. Yeah. And so yeah. we kind of hired him in tandem. We hired a sales rep and a, and a, uh, and, and an office girl at the same time. Um, I think that million plus for that office girl, if your sites are there, is good. And but also, as you see a lot of guys in the industry that are hyper successful. You say if your sites are there, what do you, what do you mean? Like if you're set on doing a million your first year, which most guys should be, you should hire that office girl whenever the bank account says it it's a, it allots for it. Um, that first yeah, one okay. hard though, man, because like you're trying to balance it out. And then now I'm at the point where I'm hiring ahead of what I think I need. Right. It's, it's a weird, I, there's yeah. a weird transition point that ends up happening. Yeah. Um, uh, that, that thing. So that's, what would you say? So I, it's hard to describe this to people like, but a lot of you guys are here. It's either you're hiring behind the work and it hurts because there's just your, your I, I like to call it feel out capacity or feeling out capacity it kind of means we're going to wait a second and you're going to in, be in pain as an employee. At a, but you, you need some tension there, right? You do need tension. Otherwise, you get bloated. Um, and then it, the hiring in front of people or in front of the work, it's really scary sometimes, but it's usually like it feels healthier to your team. 100%. So I'm just kind of like, what level of tension are you willing to accept in that hiring um gap it sounds like you kind of you're you're willing to accept less tension now than you were previously well yeah man we have a lot more buffer too is why right like we because we're bringing in more income now we have a, a greater it's each yeah. person's a smaller percentage as a salary component so from mm -hmm. a financial aspect it's yeah. easier at that beginning man when it, you're hiring someone and and let's say your market's an average salary's Fifty thousand dollars a year. I'm probably a little outlandish on an office person, but let's just say for easy calculations, that's five percent of your total revenue going towards one person that you can't really yeah. track yeah. their ROI. That's the hard part, I think, for guys to hire that yeah. that office girl. Yeah. But the amount she's taking off, and I don't want to say office girl because you know there could be office guys. I'm not. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I just yeah. happen to be an office girl. When you take that off of your plate, man, you open up your capacity so much, and I think that's where the guy that we're talking to today that's thinking about it. Like you just got to jump into the deep end a little bit and, and you were, you're, dude, I'm still drowning every day. Like even at this level in business, yeah. even at the level we're at, I'm still figuring it out on some stuff. There's a lot I have figured out, but yeah. there's also a lot that I still have to figure out. Oh, 100%. I just think that that discussion, that back and forth discussion of what level of tension and like when you can, when cash flow allows, Maybe you start to get a little bit closer to the front side of when you need that employee versus like waiting until it hurts, hurts. Yeah. That's, I think that's what you're describing. You're saying like, don't wait until it hurts, hurts. You're starting to move that up to where it's like, it's uncomfortable maybe, but not wildly uncomfortable. Well, and I was just talking to uh, uh, one of my buddies the other day. He's at a, he's at that million mark. I won't drop name drop him on the podcast or anything because I won't call him out. But he's doing all the sales. He's doing all the production. His wife is helping out with some books and some office. So he kind of already has that office component figured out. But I said, I said man, you got to pull yourself out of the field now and put yourself into the driver's seat of your business. So that all, that sales guy is hard to hire. But in our industry, too many guys are hiring before they have a process in place, and they're burning up good sales reps. Because if you don't have a true sales process, okay. you're not providing them any value at the end of the day. That's an interesting way to look at it. So you're saying we got to provide value to our employees. Tell me more yeah. about that. So, like, man, when I come in now, you know, like I said, like you said at the beginning, we rebranded this year, and it was hard for me to get that locked in. And we had a team retreat. That's one of our perks, man. Like, 
We take each other, everybody on a team retreat. We take everybody to RoofCon every year. We're pouring into them as people. We defined All-American Heart, what that meant to us. My team did that unintentionally. It means happiness, ethical, responsibility, accountability, and teamwork. And, and, and we like to present this to people when we're interviewing now and go, hey, look, if you don't have All-American Heart, you can probably walk out the door. If you're not going to align with these values, you can walk out the door because I'm, there's probably somewhere that's going to pay you better, but I can promise you there's nowhere that's going to treat you better. In today's society, man, it's not our parents' generation. People do want to make a good living. People do want to have a good life. But at the end of the day, man, they want to feel like their work's valued, and they want to feel like what you're doing is better than what they are. Um, they want to feel like they're moving the wheel. I tell them all the time, man, we're all rowing the boat in the same direction. If someone drops their oar, we help them pick it up, right? You uh, you can't just provide somebody a paycheck and, and a polo and expect them to go out and, and bust their butt to build your business. That's why guys leave businesses and start their own because, you know, I talk to so many guys in the industry. That guy's a jack – I don't I, – I can't probably cuss on here. That guy's a jack butt. I can't do what he you says. Can Okay. You can cool. cuss on you. Junie, Junie's just going to not want to hang out with you. <laughs> oh, sorry. June's on here, so I won't. Um, <laughs> but she's, she's asleep. I'm, you know, but the sales rep says, I'm smarter than that guy. I'll go start my own business. I'll value my people. And that's why great businesses are formed at the end of the day. So if you yeah. think that you're just going to provide a guy with a polo and a truck um, and say, hey, go out and sell roofs for me. You're wrong, man. You got to provide them with a system. You got to provide them with a process. You got to provide them with back end. Um, they need more. And and on top of that, they need to know, like, man, we went to our retreat. I did nothing about roofing. I brought in my good buddy JP Wilson. He did some mindset stuff, and, and we just we went hard on on what is the next step in your life, all that good stuff. I, I could care less about roofing at the end of the day, man. We're a people company that happens to do roofing, and roofing's our vehicle. I love that. <clears throat> I always wonder, you know, like, cause I, I hire a lot of entrepreneurial type people. I just hired, God, I'm so, I'm so happy and pumped about this. I just hired a marketing manager for us. That's awesome. And that's been me. That's been me. So I'm finally passing it off. So if the content turns to shit, you know what? <laughs> happened. No, I'm just kidding. No. Um, the I thing is, is with hiring a marketing manager, like he already has a business. This is weird. This is weird. He has a business. It has 150 K a year profit, but I like I like entrepreneurial type people. And I, and I'm like kind of letting them work. You know, like I just said, if you work, you know, 10 hours in the week or whatever, work 10 hours on the weekend on, on hook. Um, but I always wonder what is, what are we giving? You know what I mean? That a person that's entrepreneurial wants to work here. What are we giving? And it's not the mo it's not the most insane strat uh, salary. So it's like, because I don't have that. I have like mid, like market salary. I don't have the fucking, <laughs> you know, top of range for everybody. I just don't have that. But for instance, I think about a guy on my team who's an incredible entrepreneur. He will have his own business one day and it's going to be good. But in the meantime, excuse me, in the meantime, what I have, the, the hard part, there are hard parts about business. One of them is business development. I mean, the whole system around business development. I think that's like, an, it's really hard to get down to a science, you know? <laughs> like, if awesome. nothing else, if Hook was just, and this is not the case on Hook, so don't <laughs> don't get it twisted. But if, if Hook was just that, we do pretty good for a while, <laughs> you know what I mean? If we, because we have a very robust business development system. I don't think ultimately at the end of the day you have to have great fulfillment, 100%. and like that customer service and all that ends up being part of your reputation, which ends up being part of, you know, business development again. But the point is, is like our business development systems are mature, and it would be really kind of a it would suck to have to build those again from scratch. And I knew that when I started this business, I was like, if I can get the lead gen side down for our business and like, then I get better at sales. So I really settled, studied sales that first year. Although I could never get Dylan. I, I don't know. We just, you know, well, we're good at business development. <laughs> Dylan's just a hard to catch motherfucker. Okay. Um, anyways, so the point is, is, um, I don't feel any tea, but I wish we I just like, I, 
<laughs> oh, I appreciate that, man. I really do appreciate it. I, I, I will say, though, that that is one fundamental component. Like, it has to be there, right? Biz dev has to be good. 100%. It's a little different in roofing because each roofing salesperson is a kind of their own little biz dev engine a lot of times. Yeah. But what do you think is, like, intangible if you have to have it? And it's like when when if somebody goes out on their own, you'd be like, "Good luck building this." <laughs> like, yeah. What What do you have? What do you think is like intangible thing that's really hard to build? If you truly believe in what you're doing and you want to be the best version of yourself and you want to build a great organization, there's no other place to do that besides the Roofing Academy. I think the thing that's that's really hard to build, it's it's probably harder to maintain for us. Um, it's not hard to maintain, but it, it requires a lot of effort, and that's why guys won't do it, is truly listening to what your people are saying that are doing the job day to day. Um, when we had that retreat, that's one thing. Mm. People, and it, it wasn't like Dylan was like reaching for compliments or anything. It's one thing our people told us, man. They're like, you guys actually listen to what we're saying, and you make changes based on that. It may not be right now, mm. but you're changing stuff because we made, because we're talking about mm. it. And probably, and that's probably the hardest part, man. You know, we 3x last year. We 3x from from uh, 21 to 22, man, and it's absolutely insane. I, I don't, I don't really believe it when I say it, if I'm being honest. However, we produced, we produced that 3x that. Uh, better than we produced the one point or the, uh, the, the, so we did 1.3 in 21. We did 4 mil last year. We produced 4 mil easier than we produced 1.3 in 21. And, and we produced it easier in 22. I have a question for you real quick related to this. Cause it sounded like, and I'm not going to get into the particulars of it, but it sounded like you guys had uh, a marketing snafu. Something went poorly. I, we don't need to get into it, but the point People, is, is like, yeah, the the but you did a lot of business so what were you doing for lead gen and what were you how are you getting business are you sure that it wasn't good what you got from yeah let's we, just we, leave we all, that over there it's 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 well known around the industry and i'm not going to do it on this podcast because it's integrity yeah. and, and quite frankly yeah. I'm at peace with it yeah but um i'll be honest with you man yes. i had a bad gut feeling about it and i pivoted um, so we, we dumped a ton into Facebook marketing yep. last year. We did a lot of local, um, mm -hmm. uh, like ad, ad campaigns. And then we have some really, really badass guys that are doing great with lead gen on their own. Um, that's one thing that I'm Who's your Facebook ads guy, by the way. Uh, we used actually two last year, ironically. Um, we're, we're now bringing it back in house. I hired a marketing girl this year. So much like you, like I was the guy who was doing all the marketing and now we're finally starting yeah. to work on the marketing side of it. But we were working with Matt Smith last year. He did pretty well for us. I've worked with Conrad Quintner in the past. He's done well. Um, really, I think there's a lot of really good guys around the industry for that. And uh, Bob, Bob always jokes that I'm like the guy that will try anything with Facebook, dude. Like somebody comes to me with a Facebook campaign. I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll, <laughs> give you, I'll give you two grand a month or whatever. The, yeah, yeah. The, the ask is, but that's awesome. Well, good shout, you know, shout out to those two guys. This, the reason I asked is because the podcast going out Friday, so this will be out. I think it will be out Tuesday, awesome. The following week. So, what was just out on Friday was one about Facebook ads and like some good strategies and things. So you should show that to your new marketing person. Yeah, man. We, uh, we um, I'm always like, we push her your way a lot with the content for sure. Excuse. No, you're good, man. I love uh, I love learning about Facebook ads. I used to kind of rip on them a little bit, um, <laughs> but I didn't know what I was doing. You know what I mean? So I, yeah, I've wasted a lot of money on Facebook ads, but it's like, it's just professionalism. Right. You know what I mean? There's professionals. <laughs> it's not, it sounds so stupid. I've wasted $10,000 on Facebook ads. Yeah, if you don't and know what you're doing. <laughs> when I had a professional do it, what's that? When you don't know what you're doing, right? It's a mess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just think, oh, I'm a marketer. Well, not really because all these things, every single platform has its own like quirks and sp specifics in it. Like what I like about an, a specialist 
that does one thing all day is that they they're basically like the guy I am um, that's going to be on the podcast. You'll see it, but basically, you know, he's doing this all day. He has 15 roofing companies that he's doing it for and just, but he, he also does business, uh, um, B2B stuff too. So, nice. um, but yeah, basically like somebody that's just doing something all day. And I know, I know it for ourselves, right? I just believe in professionalism. I'm learning, you know what I mean? When you're a young business owner and you just have to do everything yourself well, and you waste a lot of money because you got to do a lot of stuff yourself. You got to go the cheap route and the cheap route usually sucks. That well, sucks. the other thing, Tim, that we did do, <laughs> that we killed it with was Google guaranteed, which I mean, obviously is Ooh, like, yes, dude, I'm like a crack yeah. with Google guaranteed. Like if I could get like, you know, that, that Dave Chappelle meme was like, you got any more of that? Like, I'll be like, you got any yeah. more? Oh yeah. 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 I always do that. Like, them, them things be, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love Google. <laughs> um, do I, you think Google guaranteed, do you think you need an agency for that? No, actually, that's probably one of my biggest pet peeves about your space, if I'm being honest, bro. And I don't know if you guys do it. If you do, like, yeah. there are guys who aren't intelligent enough. We to don't. Do no, we don't. I, I'm literally asking that because I was hoping for that answer. Yeah, I, like, it, I that, don't even understand what they would do. Nothing pisses me off more than when I hear, yeah, I'm going to hire uh, so-and-so to do my Google Guarantee. I'm like, bro, I will do it for you for free. Give me your login. Like, I got you. It's not that hard. Yeah. Um, why, why do you feel that? Like, talk to me about that because I want, I want you to definitively debunk this for other roofers out there. Like you don't need somebody to do this. Why do you believe that Dylan? Bro, it's like the herbal life of freaking marketing. Like this is such a low hanging fruit. Yeah. And if somebody swears by herbal life, piss yeah. off. I don't really care. Um, <laughs> here's the problem, man. It, a lot of MLM people watching this podcast. No, I'm just kidding. How you doing, guys? Um, no. So the yeah, problem, yeah, yeah. The, the problem is, man, it, the results are go, are so damn good. You will ingrain in your head that that agency is crushing it, and they ain't doing jack shit for you. They're just probably doubling your Google guaranteed costs. Is probably what's happening, and they're probably not getting you legitimate results if you want my honest opinion i think it is yeah. probably the lowest hanging fruit the only way to get a true guide on an agency is, is to understand look guys this is for the roofer guy out there that has no idea about marketing no enough this is what i tell my sales reps about when they go out and sell my guys don't need to know fully how to put on a roof they need to have a pretty damn good understanding though right we call that enough to be dangerous yeah. they don't need to be a full-blown roofer but they yeah. need to know enough to be dangerous you as the roofer you're going to spend a lot of money in marketing if you're not going to go out and knock doors and if you want a legitimate business you need to stop knocking doors because let's be honest man one good door knocker can ruin your whole freaking year if he leaves right so you need to be able to generate your own yeah. leads hiring a great agency and understanding you know tim's really good with seo and ppc that's his two lanes man that's where he's good at I've talked enough with his team. I've been around him enough, and I'm I'm not toting him as someone that's a customer or a paid anybody. Man, I I know he's a good guy, but I would need to know enough about SEO and PPC to manage Tim, or I need to hire someone that knows enough about SEO yeah. and PPC to manage Tim and Tim's team. That's the issue that a lot with our industry. So don't hire someone that wants to manage your Google Guaranteed because what that does is it opens a door for them to give you a great lead source that you can get. Basically for free, it's not for free, right? Like we're paying for them, but you don't need to hire someone to set yeah. it up. Yeah, it's very, it's just a very simple interface. And there's not like a bunch of things that you can do to like, besides respond to the leads and like yeah. maybe mark them as good or bad, basically is that's it. And other than that, if you're paying somebody, it's almost, it's, it's, yeah, it's a ridiculous thing to pay for, but some people do it, and I, I ultimately like. I have people I know that I'm kind of friends with that I, I um, that do. So I'm not. I don't want to be. Ah, fuck it. It sucks. You shouldn't pay for that. All right. <laughs> I love it, bro. Let's no, move on. Thank um, you, bro. And so, yeah, yeah. You gotta you gotta figure out what requires real work and pay for that stuff. The stuff that requires real effort. Like, and let's um, be honest, Tim. That's why your industry gets a bad rap. Is for from shit holes like that. Yeah, they aren't actually doing the work. Yeah. Um, they watched a course. Their inbox and everybody asking them if they can handle five to thirty more leads a month. Which, if you know who does who's selling that course, let me know because I want to like make it a little bit better and sell it to your industry. <laughs> That's a joke that Abner and I have going on. Abner Miller. Yeah. So, yeah, 
he probably could do a good job at revamping that. You know, yeah, our industry has a bad, like that's, I think that's why I have kinship with roofing though, because roofing has a bad rap too. It's that we both do. It's kind of like marketers and roofers were made for each other, really, to yeah. be honest with you. It, like it, why did, we have a terrible rap, so. No, no, once you build up your reputation, you're good. That's what's crazy about yeah. roofing, man. We don't yeah. get people like, oh, you're going to run away with my money. Dude, I got 100 five-star reviews on Google. Prove to me where I ran away with someone's yeah. money. Please. I didn't. Like, And we'll make yeah. it work, man. We're financially solvent, but that's neither here nor there. It's the same way with you, man. You build up a good enough reputation. Now you're past that stage. But, man, when you're in the beginning scratching and clawing, trying to get past the homeowner that's afraid of whatever mm-hmm. – It's so hard. Same thing for you, man. That's right. There's a lot of symmetries. It's time you rethink roofing. Okay, so Refresh, Repair, Restore is not just spraying oil on a roof and rejuvenating the roof. We go in and we soft wash the roof. We have to get rid of that algae because that algae actually takes root in your shingles and is tearing your uh, shingle apart on a micro level. So we clean that roof. We get it spotless. We do the necessary repairs that need to be done to your roof, and then we rejuvenate it and bring it back to life. Make repairs profitable. Offer rejuvenation. Uglyroof.com. Yeah, and that's like just briefly to relate all this to digital marketing once once again here. Just like that's the hardest part about websites too is because unless you're – because it's a good thing when you're in person with somebody, you can shake their hand, look them in the eyes, and like this guy really seems like a good guy. <laughs> this guy seems like he's telling the truth. And he says – he tells me something that like – he wouldn't tell me if he was just trying to sell me, right? Right. So then I know I can trust him. You can't do that on the internet. Like, that's not a thing. It's very hard to do on the internet. So that's why we, like, really push the idea of testimonials with a, a smiling face of who left it. Why we push things like the – even though we all hate the BBB, the <laughs> BBB shit, the any awards, all the reviews, all that stuff is like trust is the main thing on the website because if they come from the internet – like, and they're not from Google guaranteed because that has its own trust, right? The five stars and Google's vetted these guys and whatever else. And you can yep. use that on the website too. We're also Google guaranteed. There's just a trust problem. 100%. And that's why a lot of people are spending money on Google ads and, and different avenues to get people to the website. And then they're slipping off because there's no trust. So you just have to hammer them over and over again with trust Everything you could do and every you, you know, you guys all have creativity too. So how else can we get trust on the internet when somebody, when I can't shake their hands and look them in the eye and say, I will die rather than this roof being wrong. You know what I mean? Like we kind of give that when we're in person with people, we, we give that that personal guarantee. That's kind of yeah. like, I'm going to make sure that this is good. That's, that's trust. hundred percent, man. It's hard to do that on the internet. Hundred percent. The internet's a really cruel, cruel mistress. Um, but I, uh, I want to touch on a few final things. I know that we touch like we are certainly not going to talk about the specifics of what happened with your previous marketing agency. But I want to. I kind of just am curious of like, are you? So you're going internal with a marketing manager. Are you gonna? ever use an agency again or do you feel like you're just kind of out of that game now where are you at on that i'm not this is not a sales conversation i'm just curious for my own mindset when that when somebody has a bad experience with a marketing agency are they off that game forever where where do people go after that yeah man so for us um we don't you know, I, I, I don't ward away marketing altogether. Um, we actually did sign with another another agency uh, with our existing website. they the so the website the agency built was great. It just uh, they weren't. Who was it? Anything. The one we signed with. Who is it? We signed yeah. with Scorpion. Oh, cool! Yeah, I, I still love you though. Too. I think I knew that. I think I knew that. Um, I, think, I think you probably Corey. Did. Yeah, great guy. Because Corey's part of a revolt, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, kind of, um, but that's not the reason why. Honestly, man, it's the same way that you and I have a connection, 
right? Like when I see you in person, yeah. he's a genuine guy, man. And he's a real stand up guy. Uh, like I said, it, it, mm-hmm. it, we, we just had a re- really good connection. They're doing some really cool stuff for us. Um, just in being able to take our existing website. They, they are using the existing website and then doing digital marketing on, on that existing website. They rebuild it. You know, you probably know more about the nerdy stuff than I do, but they rebuild it uh, okay, yeah. with a new frame framework or foundation or however you want to call gotcha. it. Okay. Uh, we actually have a launch cool. call Friday. By the time this is out, um, I imagine that'll be live. So we're excited for that. Um, I'm just, I'm just happy that you're back in the game. It's like when your buddy, it's like when your buddy gets his heart broken and then, you know, he loves again, you know, that's what I'm seeing. So I'm happy about it. No. So it's good, man. We're, like I said, we're just doing our due diligence and research. And, and honestly, man, like my biggest thing right now with marketing in our space is like when someone asks me for advice, I just want to push them to the good guys, man. Like there's like five people Mm -hmm. that I trust. And that's probably my biggest beef with that organization was that they were using me as a sales technique. They were saying, well, Dylan signed up with them. So you Uh. should too. And then I've heard stories like, Hey man, they were using you. And it's like, "Mm, that bothers me more than anything, dude. Like I burn up however many dollars. Mm. We're not going to get into the specifics, but that, that bothers me. So it is what it is, man. Um, like I said, I'm not going to go into the specifics because it's not worth it. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm just curious about where you're at on all that. I think ultimately, um, always just curious. The one that got away, you know, I'm always curious about where people are going and what's up. So, um, no, but I really appreciate you chatting about this stuff. I think it will be useful to uh, folks passing that one million mark. And your wisdom is always uh Welcome. I know that I talk to some people, um, just random people, and they'll be, I'll be like, who do you look to in the space? And people have mentioned your name. So you got people out there watching you and looking up to you. And I think that that's good to know sometimes, you know what I mean? So like, hey, I'm trying to, I'm trying to help people. I'm happy I'm helping people. You know what I mean? So I really thank you for doing all that. I appreciate that, man. And Tim from the roofing industry, man, we appreciate everything that you and, and your team does, man. Uh, it doesn't go unnoticed. Like I said, when I talk about the good guys uh, within the marketing space, which uh, which it actually in that conversation continues to grow, that list continues to grow because I look at the positive side of it, man. You guys over there, you, Sydney, the whole team, um, you guys are some awesome people and always provide a ton of value up front. And I think that's something that's super refreshing in our industry that we need mm. as well. So I appreciate your kind words, man. I appreciate that you, yeah. you know, that that's humbling as all get out, man. And, and uh, I think we're both exploiting our gifts that God gave us for sure. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, like I do this stuff cause I like it. I mean, it's super fun. Um, and I love, I, you know what? I'm excited this summer too. I'm going to be out, uh, getting on roofs and shadowing roofing companies and bringing like documentarian style content to the industry. This, so I'm really excited for some of that this summer. I'm, I'm visiting a bunch of people. So, um, love just that. excited to do that. I, I think sometimes those pieces of content, are extremely valuable because sometimes you just need to like look inside to like somebody else's machine and be like, Oh, that's sweet. It's, you know, it's, um, so it's, yeah, I appreciate being part of it. You're the, you're the guy at the gas station fueling up the car. Now you're getting to look under the hood, right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Like, so originally, like, honestly, man, part of it was, I was the, I was the video guy for two roofing companies back in the, like, and I, like for years, and so I was always at their office on roofs up in attics and like getting just, you know, once a month for each of them, but still like, and trying to like kind of figure out what's interesting. Yeah. And like some of those videos do well back in the day. Like we've got some like hundred and some thousand, some like 40,000 YouTube, you know what I mean? So that's a little different than like, like a TikTok 40,000, you know what I mean? Like, so. Love it. And honestly, it's just me being curious and kind of from a different perspective, like I'm curious, like I'm, I'm interested, like little things are interesting to me. Like, where do you put your shit in your truck? Like, I'm actually curious, you know, like I like this. It's interesting. I always say everything is interesting if you look closely enough, 
You know what I mean? Like, I think that that's, it makes my life more interesting because I'm interested. Like, I'm passionately interested in something. And for me right now, that's the roofing industry. And it's, you know, I plan on being here. So I'm just, I'm curious and I'm having fun. So that's really the way I kind of go. At, I'm like a, a little bit of a journalist. That's why I like, on the high and mighty side, that's what I like to consider myself as a little bit of a journalist. So I love it, baby. Let's go. <laughs> All right, man. Well, I appreciate you. And uh, thank you, everyone, for checking this out. Um, and where can people check you out, Dylan? You, you, I think you might have already said this. What is the .com, though? Uh, website's mysteelroof.com. You can follow me on all socials at BigDM50 or Dylan Mullins on Facebook. You're more than welcome to ever reach out to me if you have any questions. I am an open door, y'all. And, and Tim and I were talking earlier. I'm a consultant without being a consultant. I never charged a penny. I'll gladly help you figure out your business, man. I love it, man. I really appreciate that. That's that's an amazing way to look. I, dude, you know, I was I was about to put this on the internet the other day, but I didn't. But it's something like if you're one year ahead of somebody else, you you look like a prophet. So share your information along the way. Like people are like, oh, that person's thirsty for attention. Are they, or are they just being generous, man? People are being generous. It is fun to be generous, but it's also like, God, I wish somebody did this for me. Yep. I, you know, that's ultimately what I feel like that's what you're, you're doing. I don't share my story because it's a dick measuring contest like the rest of the roofing space. I share, I share it because it's inspirational and someone's in my shoes that I was mm -hmm. a year and a half, three, two years ago. Mm -hmm. So that's why I do what I do, man. Exactly. And, yeah, and I literally I wish people were a little bit more generous with me when I was like first year, second year, whatever. And that's so, being the person. Um, you wanted, but right? nonetheless, some people were. So I gotta focus on that. Sorry, say that again. No, we're just being the people that we wanted when we when we started. That's what we're doing, and that's why we're successful. Exactly. So. Exactly. All right, man. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for watching. Bye.